Hello, everyone. This is episode two of the Team Respondia Show. I am Hose B, a.k.a. Hobo Sexy, a.k.a. The Buffet Prince. And my co-host, as always. Yo, what's good? It's your boy, Jose, a.k.a. Salsa Con Fuego, because I'm muy caliente. A.k.a. Jose Bank, because I'm big bucks, big bucks. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. But what's good, y'all? Episode two. We made it through another week. So what's going on? What have you been up to? Well, um, tough commute getting to work today. Woke up, had to walk to the couch, open my laptop, answer my emails. Um, nah, today was like, it was weird. This was like the first day I was at work where I was like, hmm, I've set everything up, so I really don't have to do everything. I'm going to take a nap. So I took like a 90-minute nap. It was great. And so if you you're my it. boss watching this... I'm just kidding. I was working. You're working hard. Hard and sleepy. But anyway, um, if you guys are watching this, this is probably Thursday. When are we releasing this? Thursday? Thursday. All Thursday, every Thursday. Yes. All Thursday, every Thursday. Um, last weekend, the biggest weekend in wrestling, if you are a contracted performer for the WWE, because all us broke uh, all us broke folk uh stood home because all these wrestling shows are canceled but wrestlemania weekend night one night two and the raw after wrestlemania we'll uh i guess we'll talk about that for a couple minutes what were your thoughts on that um i enjoyed it personally i thought night one was better than night two if i'm gonna be honest i don't know i just felt like the matches grabbed my attention more but i think it was because they were more like I don't know. They, the matches went a little longer, and they were pretty good. Um, personally, out of that, I would say Sammy and Danny Bryan was one of my favorite matches. I en- just I enjoy Sammy Zayn as a character. He's one of like, he's very chicken shitty, and it's very entertaining to see. But then it also it's great to see him get fucked up for ten minutes by Danny Bryan, and then it's like, oh, but I'm gonna win. I'm out. So yeah. Yeah, that was that was that IC title match. I remember going. <laughs> I remember uh, going to my wife and just being like, man, these guys are going to, like, kill themselves in front of no crowd. Like, you know, it's, yeah, it's going to be technical, but, man. And then you forget that these two guys have, like, three, four, five decades worth of experience working in, on the independent level in front of no crowd. So, like, dude, that – like, the first third of that match is, the, is just them BSing around and, 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 and entertaining. It was great. That that IC title match was highly, like, it was probably, like, the sleeper match. Like, I wouldn't say it stole the show, but it was definitely, like, oh, wow, this is not what I expected. It's better. Yeah. Yeah. I would also say that about the ladder match, though, too. Like, going in, you know, like, John Morrison and, like, Kofi Kingston can do, like, cool high-flying stuff. And I feel like Jimmy Uso, you don't really think about, like, as a singles competitor. So it was cool to see him, like, keep up with everybody. And they were all, like, doing, like, this flashy stuff. And it's like, yo, tag team wrestlers could go. Like, as a tag team wrestler, I was low-key like, yo, like, that's good to see. Like, we're not just we're not just together. We can also be apart and still, like, show people we can do things. So I was really proud for that. No, no, we can't. No, we can't. Don't, don't leave me, please. You do not work in our matches. <laughs> um, no, I agree. With- talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. Um. I felt bad. Like, watching it, I felt bad because when you do those types of matches or just anything where you're taking, like, crazy, crazy bumps on a ladder or on the outside or whatever, like, that adrenaline factor is not there because doing that in front of a crowd, you know, your adrenaline gets going, you're all pumped, and you don't feel it. You feel it the next day or a couple days, whatever, uh, after the fact, and you're sore, but, you know, you don't feel it in that moment. And I would bet you that as they're setting up for these spots they're probably in their head going this is gonna hurt and this is gonna suck because there's nobody here and I have to like fall off this ladder or I have to fall onto this ladder and like that adrenaline factor is just is just not there so let me ask you something about that because that's that's a good point but I also feel like that's something we can kind of disagree with because, like, we've been in matches with, like, no one in the crowd. 
So like you still get a sense like being like from that experience and like knowing like you're doing certain things that's like, and eh, maybe it's dumb to do in front of nobody. I feel like you still have that sense of like, no, it's going to be, at least it's like, if you know it's for like a camera or if it's for something, it's being recorded, it's for a broader audience. So you still kind of have that, oh shit, let me make this like good, you know, or let me, let me do it. Yeah. 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 I, I agree with you to that point, but also at the same time, it's like, that's not, you know, the same as doing it in front of 60, 70, 80,000 people. Like I know we've never done that, but you know, we've wrestled in front of 1,500 people, 2,000 people. I think uh, there was like 3,000 at the WrestleMania weekend we did a couple years ago or something like that. Yeah. Um, or something like that. But yeah, but th- that adrenaline is different, you know? And when you're in a, a match of that magnitude where the, at the finish is I grab the belts and take this big bump onto this ladder, like, yeah, that's going to suck, but it's going to suck even more because you don't have that, like, you know, look around and feel the roar of the crowd, you know? Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Because there are certain moments that happen, like that moment or like Braun winning the title that like you would want the crowd for and you would want to hear like that pop, you know? Because I don't think a lot of people were expecting Braun to go over. It was just like, oh, the Goldberg is going to go over clearly, like, you know? It, it felt that way. Yeah, once they, uh, once they made the switch, which I didn't watch the SmackDown going into it, so I don't know how they just, to my nah. knowledge, they just announced it. Like, oh, by the way, bronze, bronze in it. <laughs> like, um, it's just weird. And then, like, I kind of, to my knowledge, I don't know if I'm in charge of the company, right? And we're losing revenue. We're losing money because. I mean, if you're in charge of the company, yeah, they're losing revenue. That's not funny. That's not funny. If I'm in charge of the company, they're making money. All right, they're making money hand over foot. And foot over hand. Son of a gun. They're going to have to sell foot to hand. Get out of here. See, I wish, like, I could not say anything and the camera would capture that, but I have to say something to get the camera's attention. Anyway, if, if I'm in charge of that company and we're losing money because you have to pay your wrestlers, you have to pay all this other stuff, and on top of that, you have to pay this ball-headed dude who hasn't been relevant since 1998. Yeah, I said it. Goldberg is overrated. Sorry if you're a Goldberg fan. Gets my grits, honey. So you got to pay this dude like, what, a million dollars a match? You got to pay this dude commas on top of commas on top of commas for one match? Nah, playboy. Nah, you got Bray Wyatt and then you dropping the belt at Mania. I don't care who it is. I don't care who it is. Like, honestly, I would have been one of those people that were shocked if Goldberg won. If Goldberg would have walked out with the title, I would have been like, wow, they're really going to make this work until every, the crowd comes back and we can get Goldberg versus Roman Reigns because that's the match everybody wants to see. Yo, I want to see that. You are also a Knicks fan, so you don't really Whoa, have... whoa, whoa. You show some saying, respect. I'm just saying. Hold that on. Was, nah, that was uncalled for. That was uncalled for. Why you got to bring up the Knicks for? The New I'm, York Knicks are one of the greatest franchises in NBA history. And anybody who got a problem with that could at me, at play Team Espana. I'm just saying you're used to disappointment because the Knicks haven't been the Knicks since Patrick Ewing was there. There, I said it. Anyway, um, neither here nor there. Back to wrestling, uh, which is how we pay our bills. And um, yeah, no, I would have been... I, I just wasn't, I don't know. I'm not interested in seeing Goldberg wrestle anybody. You know what I mean? Like, I thought, hey, he had a great match um, with Brock. He won the title. He dropped it to Brock. They finally got to redo Brock and Goldberg at WrestleMania and kind of, um, you know, give everyone that moment that was ruined in 04. So that's it. Going to the Hall of Fame. Hell of a career, bro. Hell of a career. And then they get greedy. And then it's like you shoot yourself in the foot to spite yourself. Like, hey, let's put this old guy against this other old guy. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you hit that certain, you know, you hit that certain age where your body is not where you want it. As a wrestler, give me a guy that can carry me. You know what I mean? And we'll make magic and I'll hold my end up. But don't expect me to hold my end up and your end up. You know what I mean? You're past that point. At that point, it's just ego and pride. 
That's beautiful. Your beard's growing in a little bit too. I don't know if I told you that before. I know you just went on a whole rant about wrestling and my only comment was, yeah, your beard's coming in. <laughs> well, if I do say so myself, uh, so with the quarantine, I shaved all this and obviously grew out the uh, Uncle Shoes mustache. Um, shout out shout to out. <laughs> Shout out to Uncle Shoes. That's right. Um, and then, so my stubble started growing in or whatever. My, my beard grows in slow anyway. It's patchy or whatever. Uh, I kind of kind of came up with the idea of like, hey, you know what I'm going to try and grow? Like mutton chops. So like I shave my gin and that's the only thing I shave. Why? I, get my, I don't even get a razor. I get the, um, I get like a trimmer and just keep it stubbly and then let this all grow out. Yo, that's going to be mad weird on you, fam. But, I mean, I had the, you know, I was doing the Jim Nightheart thing. I had the soul, the Sting soul patch. So, like, I feel like any facial hair on me is weird, and then you just get used to it after a while. Nah, when you had a beard beard, that beard beard was fire. I'm trying to get a beard beard. I don't know if you could tell. I kind yeah, of, I, 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 you know, I like it. It's very, it's very, like, early 20s Latino, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, that's all I got. This is the most <laughs> I could grow. So, you know, you're looking at history. I, I agree, man. I agree. So, you look nice is all I'm trying to say. The beard, <laughs> Just keep growing it, bro. Keep growing it. You ain't going nowhere. So, we talked about night one. Oh, how could we... Bro, what did you think of the Boneyard match? I got to see American Badass Undertaker. I'm good. I'm good. That is my... I don't know if... Bro, American Badass Undertaker is probably my favorite taker. I mean, yeah, everybody's going to say, like, Ministry Taker was cool or, like, you know, regular, like, Taker Taker was cool because everybody knows him for, like, that stuff. But, yo, American Badass Taker? Big Evil Taker? I love it. I love it. Absolutely. I'm here for it. In a perfect world, I would be American Badass Taker. Instead, though, I pull up with a little bicycle because, you know, Tom's is hard. I can't be pulling up in no fucking monster oh. of a motorcycle. But I pull up with a big-ass uh, fucking big-ass bike. Not the, the bike that's, that's hanging behind you as we speak? That bike? Oh, I'll be out on that bike. Stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Criollo badass, Jose. <laughs> that's right. Oh, man. Um, what did you think of the dialogue at the end, like the finish of it, where he's just like, nah, come on, son. Come on, son. You fought your ass off, baby. I ain't going to bury you. <laughs> I ain't going to bury you. Come here. Come here, son. And he hugged He Yo, he hugged him like a dad that just whooped his son's ass and said, I'm proud of you. You didn't cry when I beat your ass with this belt. You took it like a man. I know you're hurting. Come here. I'm proud of you. Let's go get some, some milk or whatever. You gave whatever. me a fight? You gave me a fight? Go, come here. Yo. <laughs> that was then, gold. That was gold. My only then, thing, my only yeah. thing, not to cut you off, my only thing, I wish he would have choke slammed him again. Or, or just gave him a last ride just because, like, he was so that taker. I feel like a last ride into there would have been like, yo, bro, take all my money in my bank account. It would have been a, it would have been SmackDown versus uh, no SmackDown Know Your Role, SmackDown Yo. Two when they did the casket matches and every casket match ends with the last ride, even oh if you my. weren't playing as the Undertaker for no reason. Yes, as it should be. How else do you get thrown into one of those? Um, what did you think? <laughs> so I have notes <laughs> of like stuff we can talk about. And instead of boneyard match, I put boner match. <laughs> so I, so I legit was a bad. I was about to ask you, hey, what did you think of the boner match? I don't think I saw that match. I might have been on the uncut part of WrestleMania. Um, I might have to check that out later. Hey, <laughs> that's a good one. I'm writing that one down. I get it. Ha ha, circumcisions. Okay. Speaking of circumcisions, what you? Speaking of circumcisions, what'd you think of night two? What did you think? Well, you said earlier that you thought I, night one was better. Yeah, I enjoyed the matches more from night one than night two. Um, I don't know. A lot of the matches just felt like 
they dragged and like like they just felt like regular like it didn't have that WrestleMania feel match. It felt more like matches you'd see on a regular like Raw or like SmackDown, not for nothing. And I think maybe that's what bothered me. Like um Alistair Black and Bobby Lashley felt like thrown together, you know, it wasn't like built up. There wasn't like a reason. It was just like, hey, here's a match. Um, I know the tag match kind of went to like also had its issues because Andrade got hurt. But like I just felt like there's so many people you could have thrown in there. I wouldn't have personally thrown Austin Theory only because he's brand new, but I mean that's just me personally. Um just matches like that kind of made it feel a little off for me, I guess. Yeah, I don't know why you just wouldn't do like, hey, let's just do a big multi man uh tag gauntlet or something for the raw titles like they've done in the past, a fatal four way or triple whatever with other tag teams that they're not using. I, I think I think for something like that because of the rules with like how many people can be like in the building at once and stuff like that, you can't really do a four way tag. As opposed to like a regular tag match. I get what you're trying to say though. Why didn't they use like another team? I guess. I mean, I hear that the state is shutting shutting them or trying to shut them down because they're trying to classify them as non essential. And since they're non essential, they shouldn't be open. Nah, they essential, fam. Nah, not really. I'm I'm good. I got Netflix. I got the network. I got I got your Hulu account. Uh <laughs> you got my Hulu account? Yeah, I got your Hulu account. Every time you come over, you sign in. You sign in, and so you just you leave it signed in. So I don't never sign in because I don't know that password. I don't never sign it. I probably signed it once and it's saved. I don't never sign in. I know that for a fact. <laughs> You're right. You signed in one time, and I've never logged out of that. Like, uh, my PlayStation is getting like near the end of like, oh, you need to delete some stuff, and they were like recommending apps that I don't use as often. Yeah, because you were game hoarder. You get rid of nothing. I've been on your P4 before. You got mad at Basuda you don't even use. Yo, my man, I buy. I don't buy a lot of games because I'm a grown man. I don't have time to play video games. I have a full-time job. I, I saw you to- play Red Dead Redemption like four times the other day for like four straight hours. My guy, Red Dead Redemption 2 is the one of the greatest video games ever made, and I'm never going to delete that. This is like my third time playing it through. And honestly... If I could, I would delete everything on that PlayStation with the exception of Arkham Knight and Red Dead Redemption 2. Boom. Oh, I, I'm playing... Ar- well, I was playing Arkham Knight. I'm trash. Um, I know you're trash in life, but, like, what, what are you in the game? <laughs> Bro, I quit. I quit the game. I stopped playing it completely because I couldn't get past the part where you have to get, like, the Batmobile to the very top of the to- like, the very top of the tower and, like, break it into, like, a building and get to the bottom of the building. And it's mad fucking confusing. And it's like, yo, why can't I just blow a missile into this building and fucking drive there? Oh, like, so do you know... So you... Did they blow up uh, the island yet? Nah, no, no island even got blown up, bro. Damn. So I'm like, I know exactly where you are. I'm, like, 2% in the game. Like, I just... I know exactly I really where you are. You gotta, like, balance it. And find the right angle into it. I know yeah, exactly nah, what you're talking about. I, fuck that, bro. I'm good. That was too tough. I started playing Force Unleashed 2, though. And let me tell you, it's a lot better than game. Well, I disagree with you wholeheartedly. Once you get past that level, Arkham Knight is a hell of... I like... See, here's my thing. I'm not a big multiplayer, online multiplayer game person. Like, Call of Duty was great, and then it got really complicated after a certain part, and I'm like... Like, why are 12-year-olds cursing at me right now? Like, if I, fought, if I found you in real life, I would, like, beat the shit out of you. Part of my friend. The trick is you get your own chat room, and then you go on with your friends, and then y'all all talking. You could do that stuff through there. That's mad work. That's mad work, bro. You try, you try to have fun, or you try to play games alone? I play games by my damn self. I play Red Dead Redemption 2. That's true. You that's... play that shit, OD. I don't know how you do that. So, we were talking about Night 2. And that the match is dragged on. And I'm going to tell you my theory. Here is my theory. Are you ready for my theory? Go ahead. Give me your Austin theory, boy. All right. I'm going to give you my Austin theory. Going into night one of WrestleMania, everyone's expectation was low. Like, everyone went into this year's WrestleMania going, this is going to be the worst WrestleMania of all time. And then you see night one, and then it ends with that boneyard match. So it like it constantly builds. 
And yeah, there were some matches that, yeah, they probably would have been better in front of a crowd. But damn it, hell of an ending. The Boneyard match was different. It was new. It was exciting. American Badass Undertaker, I'm all for it. You know what? Maybe this year's WrestleMania is not going to be so bad. Maybe, just maybe, this could be the best WrestleMania of all the times, man. Of you all the time. Two, you, you go into night two. Night one, your expectation was here. Night two, your expectation got raised. There's levels, of course. And now, all of a sudden, you're judging night two differently. Differently. So, yeah, night two is always is not going to live up to the expectation. It's like when you watch the first part one of a movie and you're like, ah, eh, whatever, I'm really coming because my boy wants to see this or my girlfriend wants to see it. Whatever, I just go to the movies and, you know, I don't want no problems. Like, yeah, let's go see a movie, whatever. And then you watch it and go, holy shit, that was the best movie of all time. That's in my top five favorite movies. Damn near top four. Oh, my goodness. And then the sequel comes out, right? And you're like, yo, I remember when I saw the first one. It was so good. The sequel's going to be even better. And then you watch the sequel. And what happens, bro? Basura, bro. Trash. Garbage. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That kind of makes sense. I, I can see that now, because night one was like, in my eyes, like, yeah, it, it was better than expected, so I guess I had a higher expectation than part two. Um, So you got it, fam. I didn't open my third eye. That was the problem. You did. And because you did, now we both understand that WrestleMania was good, and I apologize for my remarks before. No, I agree with you. Wrestle, the night two, the matches were way too long. Matches were way too long, bro. I hate you. <laughs> The matches were way too long. Edge and Orton, listen, I'm a huge Edge fan. Uh, that dude was, to me, he's the last rock and roll character in pro wrestling. Um, great promo, great visuals. Um, someone I study when I want to not maybe not become a better wrestler, but be a better storyteller and stuff. Um, great psychology. They could have cut 10 minutes out of that match. They could have cut 10 minutes out of that match. Put that, put that extra 10 minutes. Give it to the main event. Tell, tell Brock Lesnar, hey, buddy, I'm sorry. You're gonna, if you really want to make $1.5 million for this one match, you got to put work 12 minutes and not six, all right? <laughs> You're not telling Brock Lesnar that. <laughs> oh, I'm not telling Brock Lesnar that. <laughs> Whoever works for the company is telling Brock Lesnar that. My fat yeah. ass ain't telling Brock Lesnar that. <laughs> ain't nobody telling nobody nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how glass and your <laughs> No, nah, oh. but on the real, that Edge Orton match, bro, it was just it was like ten minutes too long. It was really like the snip. Some things didn't really need to be there. That Drew Brock Lesnar match, that I really of all the matches that whole weekend, that match needed a crowd. Yeah, I think that was the match that suffered the most because it did not have a crowd at all. Like you see, this guy Drew McIntyre, who if you've been watching you know, WWE for a long time. And, and, you know, 10 years ago, he was, the, he was the next big thing. You know what I mean? I remember when he came out on SmackDown after Vince McMahon said the chosen one. And I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? You know, I didn't watch FCW. Nobody did. Um, and you see this guy work his way up to the main event of WrestleMania and you know, it's legit, you know, and that's something that really as a wrestling fan, you haven't seen in a really long time. You know what I mean? Like there hasn't been that guy that, wow, this guy deserves to be in the, you know, fighting for the WWE title. And he's never won the WWE title and he won the Royal Rumble and he's going to WrestleMania. And maybe just maybe he might win his first WWE title at WrestleMania. Bro, the last time that happened was what? So cold. You know what I mean? Like uh, 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 Roman, you know, Roman, Roman Reigns. No, not even Roman Reigns won his first title. Like out of, at, at a, backlash or something and in your in your face or something <laughs> in uh, your face in your face seven <laughs> spitting you what in your face seven I remember that maybe but <laughs> close caption nah but as a wrestling fan it's something you haven't seen in a long time and so to not have a crowd that really that really hurt that match um, but then right before it, you have one of the, gr one of the most greatest pieces of film, one of the most intellectual pieces of cinematography, I think 
top three independent films of all time, bro. Top three independent films of all time. The Firefly Funhouse match. That wasn't wrestling, but damn, that was entertaining. Yo, that was wild. That was like, that was pretty dope, not for nothing. Like, seeing like the different levels of like John Cena and the different levels of like Bray Wyatt, like, it was, it was cool. Like, yeah, they didn't bump, they didn't do like all these crazy spots or anything, but like the story they told and like everything was there was just so wild. And they were just both for it. Like, fuck, man. Shout out to my boy John Cena at John Cena. Yo, when Hello. you gonna pay me back that money? When you gonna pay me back that money you owe me, bro? Um, shout out to him. The brother took two bumps, two bumps in in the semi main event match of WrestleMania. Two bumps. I had the match of the night. I, it wasn't to me. It wasn't a match. It was like a. It was it was art, my man. It was it was cinematography. It was filmmaking. It was Le Cinema, as the French would say. You know what I mean? Oh, so you're saying they're getting an Oscar this year. Better than an Oscar. Better than an Oscar, bro. They're getting a Webby. You know what I'm saying? Independent Filmmaker Award. They're getting the Spirit Award. Is That's the legit. Really That's thing? Yeah, legit. Google it. The Spirit Awards. It's the independent. They're independent. The Oscars for independent film. Why do you know these things? Because I remember a time before Caller ID... And you had to look up information. And I once was a man in his early 20s who had nothing better to do than to look up information. I'm sure that's all you looked up. Information. <laughs> both educational, both entertainment, and pornographic. The three levels of information. That is true. That is the three levels. All right. So did you see Raw, by the way, on Monday? You're shaking your head no. Clearly, you did not see Raw. Bro, this was honestly when this is when you rob a bank, right? You rob a bank, you get the money, and you happen, you happen to fill up three bags with bill, with money, with moolah, millions and millions of dollars in each bag. And guess what happens as you make your way out the bank? You drop one of the bags. Now, let me ask you something. Let me ask you people watching at home and to my co-host, Jose. Let me ask you a question. You got millions of dollars, millions of dollars, and millions of dollars. And as you weigh, make your way out the bank, you drop one of the bags. My brother and my loyal audience watching, all 36 of you, <laughs> do you go back for the bag or do you keep running? Do you go back for the bag or do you keep running? Jose, that's, what do you think? That's tough. Cause I already got two mil on me, and I could be good with that. I could, but we're gonna go back, and this is gonna be a story that has nothing to do with any of this. But fuck it, I'm gonna tell you my tale. So this reminds me of this one time when I was like 13, right? I used to play baseball in the parking lot because in the Bronx, that's just what people do. We play baseball wherever we can, and the parking lot in the summertime is, is where it was at, fam. One of my boys goes to swing a baseball. My baseball bat, it was mad nice. It was light blue. It was aluminum. Fire. Goes to swing my bat. I don't know what happens. Let's go. It goes right through the back, the back windshield. Is that what it is? The back windshield? Right? Yeah, it went through the back windshield of the car, bro. We all ran. We all got away. My dumbass went back for the bat. So with that being said, my dumbass might go back for like the extra one million because if I got two but I could get three, there's a chance I could get caught, but there's also a chance I could not get caught. So I mean, flip a coin, fuck it, we'll see what happens. Wow, I, I'm shocked by that actually. I didn't think you would be stupid enough <laughs> to go back, stupid enough <laughs> to go back, stupid enough to go back when you already have all the money in your hands, brother, the millions and the millions of dollars. You don't need to go back. Your story really? with the baseball bat. Guess what? That's different. You know why? You know why? That baseball bat has your prints on it. Oh, That's wait. why you got to go back. No, let me, let me finish that story, actually, because when I ran back, so I decided to go back because I wanted to get my bat back. Uh, one of my boys ended up going back, too. Shout out to you, AM. Um, he ended up going back because he left his book bag. So when we both ran back, 
we got caught by the people whose car it was. And then like they surrounded us and they waited for the cops to come. But we were so young that they couldn't do anything. So like, it was crazy because like my grandmother saw it and she came down and like went to find me and then my mom and my sister appeared and everything. Like everybody and their mother appeared, but we got off perfectly fine. And I got to keep the back to my grandma's house. So again, there's a chance you could get away with it. That's why you got to go back. All right. Well, I tell this story and I ask these questions because a normal person, I shouldn't say that. Let me not judge. I appreciate that. My hoes be culo would not have gone back for your bag, would not have gone back for that dropped bag of money that robbed the bank. I would have took the money and run, moved on. You already got something? Build on that. Well, guess what? I saw Monday Night Raw on Monday, and my brother, they went back for the bag. That's right. <laughs> and it did not pay off at all. It was the dumbest thing. So, okay, throughout the course of the show, they're highlighting, hey, Drew McIntyre is the new WWE champion. <laughs> what you should do? Build on... Build on what they have. God bless you. That's what they should do. They should build off what they have, right? God bless them. Build up. Your new champion, Drew McIntyre. I'm all for it. I'm all in. Yeah. Breaking news. You're never going to believe it. Right after he beat Brock Lesnar, the, the greatest, one of the greatest champions in the modern era, something happened, and we're going to reveal it. And we're going to reveal it. The whole two and a half hours, we're going to re reveal it. Finally, two hours and 45 minutes. We're going to reveal it right now after this commercial break. You get back from commercial. All of a sudden, Drew is coming out to the ring. And I'm like, is this Raw? Or is this, well, it says WrestleMania, after the match at WrestleMania, but it's, it looks all the same. All right. Okay, so it's not Raw. Oh, I lied. I saw this. I hate you so much. <laughs> what I, happened? I painted this beautiful Picasso <laughs> picture for you. And your forgetful cool old says, oh, I saw this. I didn't have to say all that then. So you saw it. Yo. Yeah, I saw this match. My bad. I also, while you was going off on a tangent, see, I have the bad habit of not paying attention sometimes. And I'm paying attention to you telling the great story. And, you know, it was wonderful. But in the background, I sometimes have things on. And right now I have baseball on and it's a Mets game from 2015 which I'm going to be 99.9% .9 sure that they're going to win because it's on SNY and they always win baseball games on SNY because it's their channel. Spoiler um, alert. Spoiler alert. Bet with people on the SNY network between 1 and like 5 p.m. It's genius. You can never be wrong. <laughs> anyway, so you were telling this <laughs> wonderful story about Raw and Drew McIntyre versus The Big Show, right? Whose show comes out on Netflix today while we're recording this. This is a Monday. And I'm really excited. I'm not going to lie to you because I love sitcoms. And in my head, for some reason, the theme song, like Big Show's theme song is going to play while they're showing like the vignette or like the characters, like introduction and everything. So it's going to be like, well, it's The Big Show. And then just like, like his family or whatever just doing like kooky things like a montage of wholesome moments yeah the show and his wonderful family but to his theme song which is so like genius to me for some reason yeah no that's i've seen the trailer and commercials or whatever they're called for it, or previews and it looks good it looks like a traditional family sitcom which i'm a big fan of i grew up on and you can never go wrong with that formula so no nah, not at all it's going to be very entertaining. So, okay. So, back to this. You saw it, right? To me, that was them just trying to go back for the money. You know? Nah, they, could have, they could have just made that a Raw, like, match. The main event of that Raw. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, like, you don't have to be like, oh, half an hour after his match. But on the day after, we're going to air this. I get what you're saying. Yeah, let the brother come out, have his big title celebration, and... He, get, he, does, he doesn't have to be interviewed. He's just going to comment on it, him in the ring by himself, and then Big Show comes out. But you also have to think of it like this. Like, usually when those moments happen, it's they have that moment to just, like, sit and take in the crowd. With no crowd, you can't really do a segment like that because of that. And I think that's what they were thinking. But if you would have just done a regular interview, I feel like you can get away with just, like, setting up the match there on that Monday have him showing up to the performance center. He's got the title, you know, he's showing mm -hmm. up to the building. He's walking from the building to the ring. You know, I was up all night last night, just me by myself. My family's in the UK, you know, 
when I dreamed of winning the title, I thought I'd be surrounded by fans and the celebration, but because of the circumstances, I can't, but I understand that. So I look into the heart, I look into camera and, you know, all these people, millions watching worldwide. Like to me, that's, you're still telling that story. That's okay. You, you work around it. There's no need for it to be like 20, 20 minutes ago, even though, even though at the end of WrestleMania, he's drenched in sweat. And then when he comes back for, you know, 20 minutes later, he's completely bone dry. Refreshed, like, yeah. I forgot what I was, I was, forgot, what was I talking about. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> How's your quarantine? <laughs> Oh, Jim forgot what I was gonna say. Anyway, yeah. Bro. Oh, yeah. So, oh no, this is what I was gonna say. I, I was, I'm a little buzzed right now. So, like, I'm watching Raw, and I could swear, I could swear in that segment when Big Show came out, he's like, "No, I'm not here to challenge you. I'm not here to challenge you." He goes, "Oh, you don't know shit. I'm not here to challenge you for the WWE title, right? I'm not here to challenge you for the WWE title." Right now, I'm not even here to challenge you for the WWE title at the next pay per view. I just want to fight. You know, you say you're this big tough guy and you're angry and you know, you know, whatever. I just want to fight. And then Drew is like, I'm not gonna fight you. I'm not stupid. And then Big Show slaps him right, and they have the match. But then they promote it as the WWE title is on the line. Then this big seven foot <laughs> say, I'm not, ch- I'm not challenging you for the title. Like, what, like, to me, it was just, it was disconnect, man. You know, it was hoes be, ram, you know, ram, rambling. <laughs> it sounds like you've been enjoying wrestling. It was a big wrestling weekend. I think my wife was like, okay, like, I'm, you know, we're good. Can we watch, you know, the Golden Girls or something else after today? But Which you, know, you have on my Hulu, and now my family thinks, like, I'm a huge Golden Girls fan. And I'm like, yo, I've seen, like, maybe three episodes. I don't, like. How dare you, sir? The Golden Girls is an institution. Nah, it's a good show. It's a good show. I probably, I, I'm gassing it when I said I've seen like three episodes. I've probably seen a lot more. Because, you know, it was on TV land and I like sitcoms too. So, like, I have this vast knowledge of sitcoms, actually. And I feel like Golden Girls is going to be in there. Um, that's not the point. Point is, I have a vast knowledge and I love TV land. And it, it came on a couple of times, but, like, now my sisters will hit me up and be like, oh, sister hit me up and be like, oh, so you, what's good with you and Golden Girls? I know what I'm getting you. And she'll send me things of like t-shirts and like pictures of like mugs and things like that. And I'm like, yo, I don't like Golden Girls like that, fam. That's not me. Wait, 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 hold on. So your sister, who actually owns the account, not you, uh, <laughs> is, off- is offering you to get you Golden Girls stuff. Doesn't own the account? Okay, it's my account for Hulu. I get her Netflix and her Disney Plus. Not the point, anyway. If you're any of the, if you're any of those companies, we're only joking. Yeah, of course. But my point is, so your sister's offering you to get you Golden Girl stuff, and you're like, no, don't get me Golden Girl stuff. That's my friend. Why don't you just say, hey, yeah. My size. Here's my T-shirt size. Triple XL. She's not offering to get me it. She's just sending it to me. Like, hey, you should get this since you're such a big Golden Girls fan. Oh. She's and she thinks it's hilarious. Them. And I'm like, yo, I, I'm not a Golden Girls fan. Like, stop sending me this. That's funny. How? <laughs> like. But yeah, fam, that's that's what I meant. Well, we've talked about wrestling. WrestleMania weekend's over. We're moving on. Um, I don't know how long we've been talking. We've been talking for like quite some time. For like 45 minutes. No, we haven't. Yeah, nah, like 50 minutes. No, we haven't. Yeah, we have. No, we haven't. How are you telling me I have the timer on my corner right side? Damn, you got me. You totally got me. Anyway, um, yeah, this is our second episode. It's just Jose O's B. Um, I think next week we will have a guest. We are just waiting on confirmation for that guest. Yes, we and, are. And we are going to go back to our format from episode one where, hey, we'll talk about our opinions and tell you some jokes, but it's going to be mainly a watch along episode where we watch a wrestling match from someone's you'll find out. You'll find out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We'll keep you guys updated as the, weeks go, as the week goes by. 
Um, we're just waiting on confirmation, so we don't want to announce anything until, you know. Exactly. You don't, we don't want to say one thing and then people come out and be like, oh, you're liars. Like, oh, well, yeah, we lie. You know, we're professional wrestlers. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we're going to lie. Uh, but with that said, we don't want to disappoint anybody. Um, and if you're wondering what, how do you follow Team Espana, Jose and Jose B on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, all you have to do is go to Google and find it your damn self. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you, <laughs> I'm totally kidding, folks. It's at Play Team Espana on Twitter, at Play Team Espana on the Instagram. Facebook is Team Espana? Team Espana, that's it. And YouTube, well, you have, you have our YouTube because you're watching it now. Click the subscribe button, put that notification bell on so you get, you know, notifications whenever we put a new video up. It might be the Team Espana show. It might be a match from our past. You never know with us. We just it might be things. a buzzed rant. <laughs> I think that's going to be my new AKA. You know what I mean? Buzz. They call me buzzed rant. They call me the rambler. The rambler. I like that. The rambler. I think that's going to be my new thing. I'm just going to be like Southern Hispanic. Cowboy hat, mustache. I come in riding a horse. Where's Delroy Alexander when you need Giddy up! That's wild, fam. That is wild. I feel like I don't even know what to tell you. So are we call it? Are we calling it a night? Nah, not at all. What you mean? Are we calling it a night? All we did was talk about wrestling. Now well, we get to the good stuff. Because honestly, we're not just wrestlers; we're entertainers. So, Hosby, this is what I'm gonna need you to do: pull out that guitar. And we're going to end this, we gonna end this night with a song. All right, folks. I'm pulling out my guitar. Give me one second. Oh, snap. What are we singing? What are we singing? What are we singing? Surprise me. I know. Hold on. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not stupid. This isn't my first day. I know exactly what you're going to do. Hold I'm going to stretch. I'm going to think about it for 30 seconds, maybe, maybe 10 seconds. And as soon as I think of what to play, I'm going to go, I got it. And I'm going to hit that first chord. And you're going to stop recording. No, nah, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. I'm trying to, we trying to give the people an experience. We've been talking for almost an hour. Yeah. <laughs> What's your point? We've been talking about wrestling for an hour. All right. Can it's I trust time, you? It's time. It's time to change the world. And yeah, me playing guitar is going to change the world. Yeah, let's go. What, what, what am I, a monkey? You just be like, hey, <laughs> play the guitar, buddy. I want, I want to hear some tunes. No, no, no. You're not a monkey. You're not a monkey. That's disrespectful. I would never call you a monkey. What would you call me? Hose B? Nah, you got lucky. All right, here we go. 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 From the, one of the, a great Puerto Rican artist, a great American, a great user of cocaine. Allegedly. Thank you. Great musical artist by the name of Bruno Mars. This is me and my liquor store blues. I haven't tuned this guitar, so if it sounds a little funky, I apologize. Ooh, ooh, hold on. Hold on. Can you hear me? Can you hear it? That's enough time, folks. 